child who's a boy from Merton, mm -hmm. growing up in a very, from what you've described, a very loving but sort of normal family, yeah. deal with that amount of money at that age and still be yeah. Leon yeah, it's <laughs> without becoming really just kind of, you know, this majorly kind yeah. of out there, arrogant. It, how, do you keep, how do you keep steady in that sort of scenario? I, don't, I think it helps with my background. Like my, you know, my family are very humble. You know the way yeah. they are. I think I think that helps with you know with the family that I come from um, and the way I was brought up. I think that that helped me just keep my feet on the ground. Mm -hmm. But it, no, it's difficult because all of a sudden you're on, the, you know, the back pages of newspapers and people are talking about you and this, this transfer fee and then yeah. that adds pressure because you go into the club and other people are talking about you as this big money signing as a 16 year old yeah. um, but I, I never really got sidetracked by that I never really thought to myself at that time oh I've been bought for this amount or I'm worth this or yeah. you know I, I, it was just it was just more the determination every day to to want to make the first team so every day just training my best and not and not thinking not getting sidetracked by that stuff I think yeah. you, you keep your feet on the ground that was something out of my hands. It's not, I couldn't do nothing about whether they said it was one pound or 10 million. It's yeah. not something that I control. All I can control is what I do every day on the training pitch. Yeah. But I think, like I say, my upbringing helped me in, in terms of keeping humble, keeping my feet on the ground and not getting carried away thinking, oh, I've been bought for this, I've made it, yeah. I've, I've, I've done it already. And um, that certainly wasn't the case. It was, it was more, let's get on the training pitch. Let's work hard. Let's show these people that you know they've, they've invested in me, and you know it's the right thing to do. There's, a, there's quite a lot of things that you've just said there, which I think uh, uh, will resonate for people listening. Actually, so one is when you love what you do, but but keep really clear and grounded on your purpose and why you're doing it. Yeah. And you know, like you said, you didn't go into it for the money per se. That mm. kind of came as a byproduct yeah. of, of being good at good at what you do and just keeping grounded and, and then as you say having sort of pretty humble background and, and, and I guess when you go home being the youngest of four yeah. isn't it you said yeah. did your brothers and sisters just kind of go yeah whatever Leon yeah, they, you're still the little shit in the yeah. family <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit like that I mean like you say <laughs> I was the youngest, in, but in fairness, I moved away from home at a young. So yeah. even when I even when I joined West Ham, I, I lived in digs. Then I bought a flat. So I, f from 14 years old, I left home. But like you say, my my older you know uh, two brothers and sister, they were just like yeah, whatever. Like you know, <laughs> you know, it's like you come home and they're not bothered about. It. Don't give it the big one that you're worth for 1.6 million or whatever it is. They always, yeah. So they, like you say, the, the family and and obviously your siblings keep your. Um, keep your feet on the ground. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Well, I love this. This is great because, uh, you know, as I say, it doesn't matter whether you're in business or sports or whatever, actually keep keeping focused on why you're doing it and, and not getting distracted no. by all the noise around yeah. and some of the nonsense. Um, it sounds easy to do, but it's not that easy. But I think that, yeah, I mean, you know, you're sitting here today, we're having a lovely conversation and you are incredibly humble about everything you've achieved. And I think that's credit to you, to be honest. Yeah, but like I say, I think when you're in that situation, you just to keep your focus what you know the reason why you're here and, and, and why you've been bought for the amount of money you have or why yeah. you've achieved what you've achieved you can't forget that what's got you to that point yeah. there's no secrets it's just hard work and determination you know being dedicated to it every single day and that's that's what I was from 10 years old 11 years old going out and playing football on my own in the garden on my own for hours upon hours mm -hmm. and sacrificing when you were younger you know when your friends are going out and you know chasing girls and drinking and smoking and, and mm. all the rest of it. Um, saying, no, I'm not doing it, I'm going home or I'm not going out today, I've got a game the next day. And yeah. I think that's something that's so important even when you reach some success. And that's why I've always had so much admiration for the top top players, you know, your Gerrards, Lampards, Rooney's, all these guys, they've made the money, they've achieved so much, but they still go again and they still go again. Yeah. And that dr drive and determination, um, and they don't get sidetracked, like I say, by the money, by the fame, by the media, by everything else. Mm. It's, you know, every day giving your best. And um, I think it's so important. And it, it, like I say, not just in sport, mm. in, in any walk of life, when you want to be successful, you've got to remain humble. You've got to be hardworking. They're the fundamentals, you know, and that's yeah. that's what gets you to, to, to where you want to be. Yeah, I think that's great advice to people listening, actually. And I mean, I always think it's, it's relatively simple. It's not always easy, but if you've got the right belief, you've got a strong purpose as to why yeah. you're doing it, 
and you, you take action every day, then you will you will get yeah. there and you'll be successful. But actually, sometimes you can uh, get a bit blown off track. Um, and and to your to your point, then you were just talking about, you know, it, it you have to work hard. And I think the thing is that people sometimes they see they see in public, you know, the success, yeah. and the achievements. But what they don't see is five o'clock in the morning, yeah. peeing down with rain, at the training camp, when you don't yeah. feel like doing it, your body's screaming, you're crying out to stop. So they don't see all no. of the, the sacrifices that you make. How do you keep going when it is tough like that and you just don't feel like it? Mm. It is, I think, like you say, I think people see, I'm talking in football now on a Saturday when you yeah. play well and you win it and, then, and that's all they see. But what leads up into that? Yeah. Um, like you say, there's times when it's freezing cold and it's raining. You, but first of all, you're lucky. You're doing something you love. So yeah. you're playing football. It's you know, it's not too bad, is it? First of all, I mean, you're doing something that you love and you're getting paid. Which, yeah. but it, I think it's just that determination. It's just that drive. Because also, what you don't want to do is you go into a game on a Saturday. You don't want to be underprepared. Mm. So because you're on that platform and people are watching, millions of people are watching your fans, the TV. And you want to make sure you prepare for that game. So if I drop off and I think, oh, it's raining out today, I'll tell you what, hamstring's a little bit tight. I'm mm -hmm. going to stay in today. Mm -hmm. Two days in, three days in, or you're not giving it everything. When you plan a Saturday, then mentally, in your mind, you're thinking, oh, I haven't prepared right for this. Right. For me personally, I like yeah. every day, I would train my hardest every single day from the minute I step out to the minute I go in. I had to do that. Yeah. If I didn't do that, I'd go into the game on a Saturday and I'd, it would play in your mind. Yeah. Um, so that, say that option of failure, but like not training well in the week, going into a game, I didn't like that. So mm. that was why the, the determination was there and, and, and making sure I, was, I would get out there, even if it was some knocks and bumps, mm. bruises, or the weather wasn't great or whatever it may be, um, was to make sure that it, it mentally prepared me and physically prepared me going into the game to, to give my best. Mm. Mm. So I wouldn't like it. You know, I wouldn't like to, to miss training sessions because of the weather or because oh, I don't really fancy it today. Yeah, yeah. But it is difficult. There, look, it, there's times it is difficult. It is difficult, you know, various reasons. It could be, you know, I had twin boys and it's difficult. You know, you didn't sleep well the night before and you're going into training and you're tired. And mm. But like you say, there's always that Saturday that's coming and you want to make sure that you're prepared fully 100% that you know you can go into that game with confidence of what you've done in the previous four or five days in the lead up mm -hmm. to the game. And I think you're right, you know, failed what's the saying, failed to prepare, prepare to fail. Yeah. Um, do you think some of that came from your upbringing? You talked, you know, about your mum, you know, working hard in the, in the market and then driving you here, there yeah. and everywhere to sort of really help you in your, those early days and that strong work ethic. Do you think that had something to do with it almost like, and being the youngest in the family as mm. well, I don't know whether there's anything that's sort of sitting there in the back of your mind that's sort of motivating you forward yeah. in that sense? No, I think, like you say, I think the upbringing of my mum and dad was like just say just work in class you know yeah. worked hard very, you know mum out in the morning I'd be going to school my mum had already have left and she was you know up early at the crack of dawn and then like say taking me to to training so that that upbringing that background of hard work mm. um you know family come from a council state you know lived in a council state and obviously worked hard and I was able to you know to buy a house have four children but um I probably was fortunate in a way I was being the youngest because maybe if I was the oldest or the middle Maybe mum couldn't take me to, to yeah. train and as such, you know, so I, I guess there's a little bit of fortune in, in terms of, of that, but the actual background and, and the upbringing was, like I say, a loving family and a really hard working family, which, um, you know, my mum couldn't say, I'm not going to work because I don't fancy it, it's raining out, it's pitch black, yeah, I don't yeah. want to drive to Vauxhall, I don't want to do that. She had to go because, you know, she had to get money and, you know, and feed yeah. us, you know, so. If you said to my mum, I'm not going to train because it's raining out, um, I don't fancy it, you know, you can imagine how that would go down and she would, you know, you get, well, what about me when I was, you know, having to, to go out in the, early in the morning? So the upbringing, obviously, yeah. it, it does help and it, it does help your mindset as you, as you grow older. Keeps you true. Keeps yeah. You, keeps you true and ground.